Hey everybody, my name is Jay. I'm one of the expert OET teachers here at E2 Language. What we're going to do in this lesson is look at some critical paragraph structures, okay? So let's have a look. OET writing paragraphs. So before we look at these different paragraph structures, let's just briefly recap how you're scored on your writing subtest. So you're scored on six things. You're scored on purpose, content, conciseness and clarity. Feel free to pause this video and read more carefully, or you can watch the other video on the E2 language platform, which goes into detail about each of these criteria. Genre and style, organization and layout, and language. Now, when we're talking about paragraph structures, we're talking specifically about organization and layout, or in other words, whether the letter is organized and well laid out for the reader. Now, I've seen hundreds of people's OET letters that they've submitted through to E2 Language, maybe more than hundreds, actually. One of the critical issues is in the organization and layout, the, and especially at the paragraph level, because even within the paragraph, it can be disorganized, okay? A paragraph, as we'll see in a second, needs to be logically structured. And the problem with OET writing and why it differs from IELTS writing or PT writing, for example, is there's no set structure. In IELTS, for example, you can have a bit of a templated structure for your paragraph. But for OET, it doesn't work like that. And that's what makes this so difficult. However, there are some, uh, a certain number of categories of structures, which I'll show you in a second, which if you learn will help you enormously on test day, okay? All right, so these paragraph structures are recommendation paragraphs, comparison paragraphs, classification paragraphs, recounts paragraphs, description paragraphs, and explanation paragraphs. One of the key things with OET writing is you need to maintain flexibility. And unlike IELTS or PT or TOEFL, you can't use any sort of templated structure. Really, I mean that you can't. You need to be flexible. So you may need to write a classification paragraph or a recount paragraph or a recommendation paragraph, but it depends on the task, who you're writing to and why, and it depends on the case notes that you see, okay? So you need to have these different paragraph structures in your arsenal so you can pull them out and use them when you need to. First of all, let's just go back to basics and look at what is a paragraph. Well, when we're talking about OET writing, of course, you have the case notes here, right? You have the case notes, uh, which are funny little sort of phrases and semi-sentences. And what you might do is, is pull uh, some of them out from different categories and you're going to put them together. And so what you're effectively going to have is a grouping of related case notes that has a logical order, okay? That's one part of it, the grouping of related case notes with a logical order. Now, each of these paragraphs tells a little story, as I mentioned, a recommendation or a description or an explanation or something like that. That's critical. So that's basically what a paragraph is. So most paragraphs, of course, will have, or I should say, all paragraphs should have an introductory sentence. That's just critical. When your reader reads your paragraph, the reader needs to know immediately what your paragraph is about. It shouldn't be a mystery story, okay? They should read it and go, aha, uh -huh, this paragraph will be about this because that introductory sentence says what it's going to be about to some degree. This will be then followed by support sentences and, and unlike an IELTS essay or a PT essay, there will be no uh, concluding sentence. It's unnecessary in these letters. Okay, just before we move on, if you haven't taken the OET test before and you're a little bit concerned, you don't really know what's gonna happen on test day, you may not pass, check out e2language.com. Or if you've taken OET before, but you've been unsuccessful, also check out e2language.com. You can sign up for free, you can join some live classes, there's some free practice material, including a full uh, test on there, um, as well as lots of other stuff. And if you want, you can upgrade to get full unlimited live classes, writing feedback, tutorials, lots of cool stuff. Okay, so 
Let's start by looking at a recommendation paragraph. Typically, a recommendation paragraph would come as the final paragraph in your letter because that's usually where you do the uh, request or the recommendation, okay? Okay, so a recommendation paragraph presents a point of view and provides evidence for the point of view taken. In other words, if you're going to recommend something, then you better provide the reasons why you're recommending it. So the typical structure would be your introductory sentence, uh, would show what is being recommended for or against. In other words, what you think the reader should do or not do. And then you're going to have support sentences that includes from the case notes, facts and examples ordered from most important to least important. What I want you to do now is I'm not going to just show you one of these paragraphs. I want you to do something. So please join in and you can, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can pop your answers into the comments below. I want you to reorder this paragraph, thinking about what I just said. What would be the good introductory sentence that's clear that introduces the paragraph? And in what order from most important to least important would these sentences go? Okay, and this is a recommendation paragraph. You have 30 seconds. Okie dokie, how did you go there? So let's have a look at the answer. Uh, there wasn't, this is the best possible answer. You could reorder it a different way, but this is the best in terms of most important to least important, a good recommendation. So I recommend that Mr. Smith change his medication. There you go, that's a pretty straightforward introductory sentence. The reader will immediately know what the paragraph is about. It is quite clear that the side effects of the medication are worsening. Zoloft may be a more suitable option. Members of Mr. Smith's family have taken this medication historically without issue. There you go. So that's an example of a type of paragraph, a recommendation paragraph. Let's now look at another one. Let's look at the comparison paragraph. So in a comparison paragraph, you're comparing similarities and or differences. In the introductory sentence, you should identify the topic and show your intention to compare something. And in your support sentences, you'll describe X and then you'll describe Y, okay? Y is in uh, the, the, uh, the thing that's being compared. Let's do another reorder paragraph. You have 30 seconds, keeping in mind that this is a comparison paragraph, thinking about a good introduct clear introductory sentence and probably going again from uh, most important to least important, or most recent to, uh, uh, what's the opposite of most recent? Furthest away, I can't think of the language, but you know what I'm talking about. Cool, how did you go there? Let's look at a possible answer. So, good clear introductory uh, sentence for a comparison paragraph. Mr. Smith's moods have been fluctuating. When he first presented, he was calm. A day later, he seemed rather agitated. Today, he seemed calm again. Okay, so what we're comparing here or contrasting is the uh, different moods that Mr. Smith has been having. Now, this paragraph, of course, is very simple, probably overly simple. I'm doing this just as an exercise for you. On test day, your paragraphs may be a little bit more complex. Bear in mind that, again, unlike IELTS and unlike PT, you do not want to write overly complicated uh, paragraphs in your letter. The purpose of OET writing is to be as clear as possible because you're not writing an, uh, a, a discursive essay on some 
topic, for example, you're writing a very straightforward uh, information letter, discharge referral, uh, transfer letter to somebody who needs to very easily and quickly understand what it is you mean, okay? So your paragraphs might be a little more complex than this and possibly a little bit longer, possibly not. There's no real set length of a paragraph. Again, you need to be flexible. Anyway, this, hopefully this is uh, helping you to understand different paragraph types. Let's now look at a classification type of paragraph. So this is where you separate items, sorry, separate, separate, adjective, separate items are grouped into categories according to shared characteristics. So your introductory sentence will identify what is to be classified, then you'll describe, describe, describe. Uh, I'm gonna skip this one because that sounds confusing and I'm just gonna show you the answer here. So this is an example of a classification type of paragraph that you might need to write on test day. Mr. Smith has three main psychological issues. First and foremost, he is experiencing severe depression. Alongside that is an attendant feeling of strong anxiety. He also seems to be experiencing intermittent paranoia. Mr. Smith seriously got some problems. Anyway, so this is an idea of a classification paragraph. We've said in the introductory sentence, he's got three issues. And then I've gone first, second, third. Nice way to uh, construct a particular paragraph if you need to do that on test day. Let's look at a recount paragraph. And this one will be probably pretty common uh, when you're recounting a story about a patient or a narrative, or in other words, what happened to the patient. And if you're sharing that with the reader, which is very common in OET writing, you need to write a recount paragraph. And that is when you describe what happened to someone. In the introductory sentence, you'll identify the point of the story, you'll describe and you'll explain. I'll give you 30 seconds to reorder this one. Okay, again, good, clear introductory sentence would be, Mr. Smith first presented at emergency two weeks ago. You can see how I'm recounting a story here. I'm telling the reader a narrative of what happened to Mr. Smith. Second sentence, he was apparently suffering a psychotic episode. He was administered Valium and taken to River Valley Center. By the time he arrived, he was much calmer and his behavior had normalized. There you go. You can see the sequence of sentences that tell a story about what happened to poor old Mr. Smith. Cool, let's have a look at a description type of paragraph. Again, a pretty common one in OET writing. This is where you write about how something looks, sounds, or has healed, etc. Again, it's a bit like a story, but more descriptive. And you provide specific details of the most important features. So in the introductory sentence, you should identify the thing to be described. Uh, you wanna show main features and then minor details. So again, your paragraph will go sort of, think, always think most important, least important, or main features, minor details, most recent, most distant, something like that, okay? Okay, so let's, uh, let's uh, what are we doing? Reorder this paragraph here, bearing in mind that it's a description paragraph. Okay, so we're describing in detail. There are going to be lots of adjectives in these types of paragraphs because how do we describe? We use adjectives. Okay, let's have a look at the answer. So as a result of a drunken incident, Mr. Smith has a dislocated finger. It hit, 
It is his little finger on his right hand. There is some swelling and a minor break in the skin. He described it as numb, but otherwise had little further complaints. That's a nicely structured paragraph, and it's describing in some detail about Mr. Smith's dislocated finger. And that is obviously not this specific example, but that is certainly a type of paragraph that you might need to write on test day, a descriptive paragraph. And again, always think about the structure or logic of the paragraph going from, well, let's look at this one. So let's go through it. So it describes the, you know, the, 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 the good introductory sentence here describing what's going on. He has a dislocated finger. Then we uh, locate it or identify it's his little finger on his right hand. What's the next major issue? Well, there was swelling and a minor break in the skin. And the least important bit of information, well, he said it was numb, but otherwise he doesn't really care about it, okay? So you can see a logic in the, uh, the way that we've organized the information there. You need to always think about that. Okay, the last critical paragraph structure is an explanation paragraph structure. An explanation paragraph is required if you are asked to describe how something works or is done. Okay, so this could be, um, let's say you're a doctor and you're writing to a home care nurse or you're a, manager, uh, you're a home care nurse and you're writing to someone who's going to be visiting a patient. You need to describe how something is done. Okay, so first of all, you identify what is being explained. So it's again, it's not a mystery story for the reader. They immediately know what you're talking about. And you give sequenced explanation of how something works. See if you can do it with this paragraph. This is a paragraph about how Mr. Smith should be administered his medication. Okie dokie, so good first introductory, nice and clear sentence would be, Mr. Smith should be commenced on Zoloft immediately. Okay, now I'm going to get into the explanation. For the first month, he should take 25 milligrams per day. Second, uh, sorry, third sentence, if this is inadequate, a further 25 milligram increments, actually the grammar's wrong there. No, ah, uh, increments, just, Look at that, I've made a little mistake with articles. And let me just use this as a great little example to say that little grammatical errors like that are actually not that important in OET writing, okay? They're certainly not a major issue to be worried about. If this is inadequate, further 25 milligram increments should be administered monthly. Mr. Smith's dosages should not exceed 100 milligrams. There you go, it's a nice, explanation paragraph where somebody, where you are explaining to somebody uh, when and how much of a particular medication a patient should take, for example. That's an explanation type of paragraph. So you're probably sitting there right now thinking, oh my god, I can't remember what these six types of paragraphs are. It's all right, it's cool, it's fine. This was just to raise your awareness. You already know how to write these types of paragraphs. What I've just done here is categorize them for you to make it a bit clearer in your mind as to what you probably already do. Okay, now that we've talked about paragraph categories or paragraph types, the six major types, let's talk about coherence. Let's talk about what is actually happening inside the paragraph the way that your sentences connect to each other and the way that you use vocabulary and pronouns, etc., to create a nice flow from beginning to end. We've talked about a logical sequencing structure. Now let's talk about a flow and how to write them nicely. Before we do that, if you're watching this on YouTube and you're not yet a subscriber, I will be heartbroken. You need to click that subscribe button. And if you want to be extra nice, you can click like and leave a comment. Uh, cool. Okay, so with regard to paragraph coherence, we need to talk about repetition of key nouns.
This helps our reader to understand what it is we're saying. And again, the point of OET writing is clarity, clearness, clarity. So here is an example of a paragraph with repetition of the word psychosis or some form of the word psychosis. It doesn't need to be the same word. It can be a different word form like psychotic, psychosis, for example. So Mr. Smith was admitted to Xavier Hospital Emergency Unit on Feb 2nd, experiencing florid psychosis. The nature of his psychosis was characterized by paranoia. He was not violent in any way. However, he claimed to have claimed to have not had a psychotic episode or episodes prior to this event, though psychosis does run in his family. You can see the use of the repetition of key nouns to make sure my reader fully understands what it is I'm saying. What you can also do if that becomes a little bit too repetitive is use synonyms, words that mean very similar things to that original word psychosis, for example. So we could say something like, and you be the judge, is this clearer or less clear? Mr. Smith was admitted to Xavier Hospital Emergency Unit on Feb 2nd, experiencing florid psychosis. It's always important to use the, the key noun at the start. You don't want to make that obscure or unclear. The nature of his episode was characterized by paranoia. He was not violent in any way, however. He claimed to have not had any such experience prior to this event, though the issue does run in his family. You can see how the use of synonyms here has sort of, you know, sometimes you can be too repetitious, overly repetitious. So the use of a clever synonym here or there, like episode, a you know, psychotic episode or issue, for example, is a nice way to write. And it, it, it's still very clear, but it just sort of enhances your writing a little bit. What you probably will do, apart from repetition of key nouns and the use of synonyms, is use pronouns. Okay, so we have the key noun psychosis here, and we might mention it again just to be super clear. But then in the third mention, we might use a pronoun like such an episode. Such an episode is a pronoun that refers back, and it is a very clear pronoun that also refers back okay, to the original noun. So you might be uh, using pronouns as reference to refer back to those key nouns. Let's look at a much more common, simple uh, 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 way of using pronouns in a paragraph in an OET letter. So here's a very simple one. The first mention of the key noun, like Mr. Smith, thereafter you can use pronouns, personal pronouns like his, or he, for example, these all refer back to Mr. Smith. So this is a good way to uh, create flow in your paragraph because in English, it is weird if we just say Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith. It's much more common, much more elegant to say Mr. Smith, he, his, he, his, for example. Okay, pronouns are critical to good paragraph cohesion. Okay, let's talk about linking words now. And if you've come from an IELTS test or the PT test or the TOEFL test, you need to think about linking words a little bit differently. And put simply, with the use of linking words, words like however, although, as a result, therefore, for example, uh, don't use them too frequently, okay? Just a few, maybe, I mean, I can't set a limit, but maybe one or two max per paragraph. And don't make them stick out. Let me show you what I mean. So this paragraph about Mr. Smith has two linking words, however and though. And what you'll notice is I've embedded these not at the beginning of the sentence. I didn't say, I didn't say for example, uh, however, he was not violent in any way. I said he was not violent in any way, however, or he was not violent however, in any way. That would be a bit, wouldn't work so well. But a good way to use your linking words in OET writing and IELTS and PT as well is to not just put them at the start of the sentence. It creates, makes it a bit clunky, doesn't create great flow. And you can see the use of the word though here uh, coming in the middle of the sentence. 
I could have put it here as though he claimed to have not such an episode, but more elegant here. But the key thing is here, I'm not overusing linking words. But if I do sprinkle a few in there, it does create nice cohesion within the paragraph, okay? Cool, and just to recap paragraph structures. So what we just talked about with a repetition of key nouns or synonyms in a paragraph to create flow, the use of pronouns to create flow, the use of linking words to help the flow flow, and then what we talked about at the start were paragraph structures. Let's just recap those. We looked at recommendation paragraphs, comparison paragraphs, classification paragraphs, recount paragraphs, description and explanation paragraphs. As I mentioned, on test day, you need to be flexible. There is no template for OET writing, and there is no template for a paragraph because it depends on the task, who you're writing to and why, and it depends on the set of case notes. So you might in your letter have a comparison paragraph, a description paragraph, uh, an explanation paragraph, and a recommendation paragraph, for example. That might be the type of structure, the overall structure that you need on test day to fulfill the requirements of the task, okay? So you might wanna go back and do a few practices of these different types of paragraphs. That'd be critical. Okie dokie, if you're watching this and you haven't taken the OET test before, or you have and you've been unsuccessful, then you need to check out our mini mock test. It's awesome. Okay, so the mini mock test on e2language.com is 100% online. It comes with a scored report with teacher comments on your speaking and writing. The speaking feedback, you actually do a one-on-one -on -one role play with the teacher on Zoom, which is a program like Skype, so just about anywhere in the world, doesn't matter where you are, you'll meet one of our expert teachers to do a role play. The teacher will give you comprehensive feedback. You also submit your writing through as part of the mock test and you'll get writing feedback. And all of the reading and listening uh, uh, subtests and the case notes are all written by an expert OET writer, so they're very high quality. It's going to be a good test experience, and more importantly, you're going to get really uh, good results back. This is what the results look like. It actually breaks it down into listening, all the different subtests. You can see how well you performed in each one. And then when you click on writing, it can bring up a, a report, and you can see exactly according to the criteria what you're doing right and wrong. Check it out. It's compared to the OET test itself, it's relatively inexpensive. And it's definitely a good thing to do if you haven't taken OET test before or if you have and you've been unsuccessful. Anyway, enough from me. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you soon.